Okay, so, hi everyone. Uh, most of the people I recognize, some of the people I don't recognize so much, uh, this is, my name is Marcel Mino, and today I'm not here to talk about my work, about the kind of things that I do, or to promote myself. I'm here just as a guy, talking to you guys about talent. So it's a certain topic that gets thrown around a lot, that um, do I have talent, does he have talent, about how necessary is talent. Well, um, I have certain thoughts about it, so let's see about that. Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, this is the preconception we basically have about talent. You have to be born for it. If only I was like that guy, he or she knows what he or she is doing. I'm not talented. I'm doing things I wasn't born for. And, of course, they're always classic. If I had it, I'd have success. We tend to think all of these kind of thoughts th through our lives a lot of times. And we always compare ourselves to other people. But let's take a look at about talented people and maybe talentless people. What's the difference between talented people and talentless people? Here we have a lot of faces, but how can we know if they have that supposedly magic property that we're talking about? What makes them different about us? Is that they have money? Is that they are smarter? Is that they have more jobs or better jobs? Or maybe it's that they, we just think that they have success. They have achieved success at some level. We think they are happier than us because they have a more realized life. Okay, that, uh, that's not so much. Let's go to make a quick comparison. The best example always gets thrown a lot is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is the classic, this guy is, was born with a talent all encompassing, this guy was a genius, etc., etc., etc. And we always have the, that impression that how do I compare to that kind of guy? Who am I? Well, let's look at some highlights of his life. Next slide, please. Okay, so where was Mozart doing at your age? Well, let's see. For example, at the age of five, Mozart was already composing short pieces. He wrote his first symphony when he was eight and began touring the cuts of Europe with his father and sister at six. He visited London when he was nine. Then at 25, Mozart had two jobs in Salzburg already under his belt, under his story. He had toured most of the continent and had written 31 symphonies and had dipped his toe into opera. With early works like Bastien and Bastien, Mitridate and Idomeneon. He married the following year. And at 35, he, won, he had one of the most productive musical years of his life. He added Cosi Fantute and the Magic Flute to his operatic CV, as well as his clarinet concerto and most of a requiem. He had also become a father for the sixth time. <laughs> yeah, the composer died on the 5th of December of 1791, aged 35, and his funeral took place two days later. So we look at this and we think, okay, that guy had a, had a good path. <laughs> he did it good. He did a lot of things. And how do you compare to that? But let's take a quick look. He just, he worked a lot, he had a job, he married, he had kids, and he died at 35, okay. But let's look at the other side, the other side that doesn't get said so much. Okay, these are also true facts. His father, Leopold, he described Mozart's birth as a miracle from God because he seemed too small and weak to survive. Leopold was usually known as being a tyrannical, mendacious and possessive teacher. Travels during his childhood days always came with severe illness, leaving him pale, small, delicate and with a damaged ear. As usual for the composers at the time, he worked without any financial security or extra benefits and his services were strictly paid for work, without any royalties or such. His work for the Archbishop of Salzburg actually ended with the Archbishop's secretary giving Mozart a little kick in the behind. So that was the most kind of humiliate, eh, humiliating kick out you can get. So he lived many years in extreme poverty during which four of his children died at infancy. 
he, and he only started a path to economic recovery just before his death by extreme illness. And his last work, The Requiem, was completed after his death by his student, Franz Xavier Sussmeyer, the idea of which painted him greatly. His last words to his wife were, I shall die now when I am able to take care of you and the children. Now I will leave you unprovided for. Two seconds later, he was dead. He was dead. And with certain eschatological details I'm not going to share. He was buried in a common grave without a name two days later. This doesn't mean that he was in a, in, a, in, a common, in a common grave with other bodies. This means that he wasn't going to have a tombstone and 10 years later his body could be extracted to be replaced with another more recently deceased person. So what does leave us at? Leave us, okay, this is not so cool anymore. This, is, this not, doesn't make me so envious of him <laughs> anymore. So this guy had it rough too. So he had it really rough. He had talent, but he didn't have, he did, did he have success? Do I think he had, he felt realized or he felt at the top of the mountain at any point? Well, it doesn't look like that really. But he was glad because of the work he did, of the things he created, but not of what came with it. There are a lot of examples like this in life, but I, I, I want to ask one thing. Uh, so Mozart, we could say, was a guy who basically was, uh, he had really social problems. He, he, he considered himself not professionally realized and uh, he considered himself not a rich guy. So does that sound familiar to anyone here? Okay, depending on if it sounds familiar to you or not, that means that either <coughs> you've had a better life than Mozart, and that's saying something, and maybe if you feel that that sounds like your story, then you could very well be Mozart. <laughs> and that's good too. Other examples. We have Vincent van Gogh, painting icon, he only sold two paintings in life and was emotionally frustrated, extremely emotionally frustrated. We already, we, we, everybody I think knows the famous anecdote of him cutting his ear, in part from this frustration. Franz Kafka, he's regarded as the writer of the 20th century. When he died, he left the instructions of his work to be burned, all his unpublished work. His best friend disregarded his last petition and published everything, and that's the reason he really became famous because his friend couldn't, bo couldn't bear the, the notion of such good work just disappearing. This guy had, had not any money, he, he didn't have success, but he did really good work and he was glad with the work he did. And for last we have Francis Ford Coppola, he's, the, he's more, a more recent guy, he's the director of The Godfather and Apocalypse Now. Now he's making a living in the wine industry because he had success but he doesn't really have money from it. He just, he's still living, he's still living, and that's enough. He's glad with the work he did. We have a lot of other examples. We have, of course, the always famous Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, he had success and he had money, but he wasn't happy all the way. He had a lot of troubles, you know. He co-founded Apple, but he got kicked out of Apple. He got better, but that was a rough patch. He was really socially anxious. He had really emotional problems. And of course, the thing that all these guys have in common is that they, it's not that they had success or not, it's that they did choices. For example, Steve Jobs did a lot of good choices about what kind of products make, about what kind of technology should be made in his company, but he also made a choice when he contracted cancer not to pursue chemotherapy and just pursue alternative medicine. So that's a choice he made and he does and he didn't he never regretted it because it was his choice sometimes you score sometimes you fail horribly but that's how it goes it was your choice and normally you're pretty glad about the choices you made because it were, they were your own please let's go to the next slide this i think this is going to fa sound familiar to anyone this is uh, these are the famous steps of success we always think okay so i'm beginning here and when I climb these steps, I'm going to reach success. I'm going to get what I want. Okay, I'm not going to talk about this, but let's, t let's think about how does the steps of other persons look from our perspective? Well, it seems something like this. Next slide, please. 
yeah, we are on a very long and very horrible and um, ex excruciatingly long stir, but we look at other stairs and they look smaller, easier and clearer. And we think these guys are just going straight to the top. We look at Mozart, we look at Steve Jobs, we look at all these guys and, and we just see the good things they did and the things that they achieved. Okay, they achieved those things. But we have to think that they had a lot of patches that we can't see and we may never see, but everybody has them. I look at everyone in this room and I see those stairs parallel to mine. The easiest thing for me is to see that everybody had an easy path to where they are now and they are having it, they are having a blast with life. But it's more difficult for me to actually see that everybody has their problems and everybody has their things that they have to get through and fix. But I think they're going together. And the other thing is that we see that on the stairs of, of others, but others also look at our own stairs the same way. So. Uh, let's go for a more like her to the comparison Okay, is that it doesn't look that good, but this is a still from the tortoise and the hare uh, Short film that was doing by silly symphonies in the 30s so uh, We all remember that story. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please <coughs> It's the classic is a race between a hare and a tortoise and the thing is that at the end Well, the hare is supposedly talented the hare, it's really, by default, it's really faster than the tortoise. But at the end, the tortoise wins. So let's compare. What they do? The hare runs really fast. He also sleeps, flirts with girls, reenacts William Tell, he plays a tennis match with himself, and scores a baseball home run. He also fails the race. The tortoise runs a lot. He also wins the race. So this sounds good, but uh, how, where does that leave us in real life? Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, so let's think about one thing. So, if we think that people, to get where they want to go, have to go through a lot of rough patches and problems and things they have, they have to resolve and it's not easy for them, then they are closer to the tortoise, in fact. Steve Jobs is closer to the tortoise, Mozart is closer to the tortoise, and I think everybody here is closer to the tortoise. So, normally, the hard-working ones, the tortoises, will get there, slow and steady. And normally they need you to get there with them, because we have to help each other. In real life, the talented people, whatever it is that um, they were born in a good family, or they have more money, or, or maybe some genetic differences, uh, uh, these kind of talented people, they spend their time doing anything but what they should be doing. And then anything usually means trying to bring you down. Yeah, that kind of thing happens. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. I think he got asleep. <laughs> okay, so, um, okay. That, has anybody seen here Good Will Hunting and Rocky? <laughs> okay, I think you, you've seen it. Okay, so. Uh, this, this, this is a good comparison to see what is the kind of thing that we normally think a talented person should look like or looks like and what maybe a real person who achieves success or does his things in life looks like. Good Will Hunting is the story of a 20 year old run down um, thug on the streets of, of New Jersey that out of nowhere he also knows six constitutions by ear he knows four languages, he basically, he knows military strategy, he knows quantum physics, he's basically a genius, he's this kind of superhuman guy that the NSA, the NASA and the CIA are just dying to get their hands on him to just to give him work because he was born basically with it. Uh, so that's what we think, but normally it doesn't work like that. Ir ironically, normally something closer to Rocky. Rocky is something closer to that, yeah. Rocky is just one guy, 20 years old, so bad. He is a really dumb guy, a really simple guy. He doesn't have any innate quality. He just follows his path in life. He does some choices and he ends up boxing. And it's a really difficult path. A really, uh, it's not that it's not funny, 
it's not fun at all and it's not good in fact at the end of the movie he loses he loses the battle against Apollo Creed that he feels fulfilled because he did what he wanted to do and he just wanted to go up there and endure eight rounds with this guy that's supposedly the best in the world and this guy and he is successful well so basically uh, let's go to the next slide so on one hand we have talent to potentially being good at something or talent doing something because it, it's really funny that when you look at, at Good Will Hunting I, he never does anything in the whole movie you know the movie ends and he's just in a car going to Philadelphia I think but he never really does anything really impressive but Rocky that the whole story it's portrayed as being this guy with no innate quality well he managed to shine he manages to shine yeah and that's the kind of thing that that I see every day with everyone and I see that everybody feels like that everybody when they reach success or when we see that they reach success what they're thinking is what are these people seeing in me I didn't do anything at all I don't, I don't get what I did to make them so so shocked at me I was just doing my thing so we don't feel success when we get it let's go to the next slide uh, basically if, so that means that we can all achieve success our personal success and that's just for us to decide what it is because everybody has a skill everybody has something that he can be good at you can be good at almost anything you think of the problem is that most of us don't know what's our, what's our skill and, and maybe we feel lost because of that on one hand your skill is that thing you've been doing all your life probably without knowing yeah for all life you can be working I don't know you may be a driver you may be a teacher uh, you may be even a soldier I don't know but maybe you don't know that you're really good at mathematics or you're really good drawing or you're really good at inventing things or you just like translating things and you've been doing that all your life on our way on our other or maybe you just with a knowing you're always designing games in your head and well then you should just try it because you've been with a knowing it practicing to do that so you can decide to do it or not to do it if you just decide to try it well what can happen the worst thing that can happen is that you get success because what we have to see is that there's no really big part of the roller coaster there's no zenith we can reach and everybody is hunky dory from there uh, your, the only talent you need in this life is to basically get your ass up or down depending on your job and just do it whatever it is and try different things uh, next slide please this is a this is a quote that I heard uh, the just last week from a really good writer that I liked that's Neil Gaiman he said about 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 your job and, and about doing well don't worry about it you're now thinking that you are not good enough then you will be thinking you used to be better and that's it that's it so um, let's say that uh, if we think if we if we follow the narrative that depending on our choices we may reach our personal success we can reach things that we propose to do without thinking of what other things our success may be if we, ju if we just think about what we could or we would want to do then everything you do was by your own choice and it's got a positive effect on it so basically um, the thing is that I look here at the people gathered here and what I see is a lot of people that decided to be here because as far as I know um, almost nobody got put here yeah everybody came here for one, re for one reason or other some are doing it for jobs some are doing it for I don't know for um, to relax some are doing it to trying to reassess his, li his or her life whatever it is that means you already did something so the impression normally I get every Friday when I get here is that well I wanted to share four things that I wanted to say those are please next slide one just because you are here 
I think that you are going certainly going to be involved in a project that's going to be highly exciting for you and that's and that it may be your personal success I really think that second thing you just have to keep on because you are not there yet but it's going to come at any moment and when it comes it already it it, it, it will be already gone away <laughs> yeah yeah so and the third thing obviously is one of the most important is if you don't like what you are, where you are now just drop it whatever else you do you're going to be happier and there's no doubt about it it doesn't matter if you are getting more money than you will be getting it doesn't matter if you have more friends that you will have the only thing that matters is if you feel that you are doing what you something you like to do it doesn't have to be the thing you have to do and it has to be something that you'd like to do Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're, a, uh, uh, maybe you're an engineer and you just want to do cycling. That sounds stupid. Or, just, or you just want to go to the gym. Or you just want to write a short story or anything. It doesn't matter. Just do it. And because you're here, I can assure you, please, the final thing. You got what it takes. And that's it. very much yeah as always we're gonna round up with uh, a short I don't know if uh, you want to yeah, take yeah. questions or comments of what course of course All I right, love so to so then it's you know <laughs> we understand yeah <laughs> any your, comments what's your biggest skill you don't know of <laughs> wow well I have a few suspicions skills that I don't know of you mean yeah wow Mm, I think I may be a good father. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it's a skill I don't know of. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, but I have an impression. I just have an impression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any talented people here? <laughs> Everyone. Everybody is talented. <laughs> Yeah, please, point. Um, so the last four points, I couldn't help the impression that you're trying to say that all people that aren't here are lacking those four things. No, <laughs> they are not lacking them. They specifically got them. If you are here, you got what it takes. You just have to keep going on, doing what you are doing, because you are going to be involved in a very exciting project. And the third thing, and, the, and now the optional third thing, is that if by any chance you are not happy with what you're doing, just drop it and go and to other things that you'd like to do. Sure, I was wondering why did you say people that are here? Why did you refer to us in particular? I, would, I was kind of trying to say that I think this applies to any person on Earth. Well, I, 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 I not think so really. I, because I'm doing, a, that's a personal opinion on the people here. Because you've actually had to come here. But by example, there's a lot of people just <laughs> outside of this room that they're just going through the motions, going where life leads them without thinking even twice about it, if that's something they would like to do. So they're not stopping to think if they're happy or not. They're just, well, this is my life. Okay, okay, and then maybe 30 years from now, 40 years from now, flu something is going to just squash them in the head and a sudden realization is going to come that my life could be something really different and I could really be myself. This comes a lot from personal experience. <laughs> what happened to you? Well, um, I used to be a musician for 15 years. So what happened was that I wasn't happy at all. Uh, for all the people here that have had in the past office work, well, for me that was my office work. That was from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening of just constant bureaucracy, just constant meddling with a lot of people and when I came to it, I, 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 for 10 years I didn't have even one friend. I realized that although I, I was all, all day speaking with 250 people, I didn't have the phone number of any of them. We never hang out for anything and we never cared for each other. In fact, Later, I realized that most of them were backstabbing me. 
in a lot of ways. So, in fact, for me, it was really tragic because at some point I just decided to drop it. Because I said that if I'm going through this way, then I will be going through this way, and there's not going to be any other side of it. If now I decide I'll be doing this, I'll be doing this for the rest of my life. And yeah, maybe I'll get money. And the other thing, music is the one thing that everybody has ever told me that I was talented at. For my whole life, I was supposedly born for music. So I decided, no, I don't want to do this thing. Because I don't care if I'm talented or not talented or whatever. I'm just not happy doing that kind of thing. And I just left it and I had to build up from scratch without having any friends, with any contacts, anyone to ring around. Just me on the street. And, and that's basically the gist of it. Now I'm, really, I'm a really happier person. I, mean, I basically wouldn't be here if I kept on with that kind of music work. Now I do, apart from many other things that I'm supposedly not talented at and that people told me before doing them, that was a mistake doing them. Uh, apart from doing events, film, theatrical plays, short stories, translation, and a lot of other stuff, I also manage musical events. I also manage musicians, and I also keep on doing certain music-related jobs. For example, disc recordings, certain type of concerts. And I do that mainly because of the money, because I need the money. And I fought with myself to keep doing music to get money. Because it will be easier to just say, no, I'm not going to do music because I'm just happier. But no, I'm going to do it measuredly, with control. Because I want to do certain things, and, that, and those things are my success. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so. Any other questions, or that's it? Cool. Oh, please. Do you ever, because you work kind of developing others and things like that, do you ever do any exercises with them to uh, uncover perhaps hidden talents or skills or strengths or anything like that? Or do you have a process that you use? Yeah, what I do is that when I need someone to do something, I just teach them. By example, uh, two years ago, I had to. I had to do a theatrical play, and the problem was that here we are really under-resourced to do theatrical plays and that kind of thing. So at first, the producer told me we would be able to get actors from the acting school here and the other side of the, of the city. But the very first day of the audition, <laughs> the news came that the, we, we won't have that. We are going to have to resort to students of producing uh, producing students uh, for one of the technological institutes here. So these were people that had no background at all in acting. And it was a little bit, um, it was a bit of a difficult play basically because we had just one month and a half. So what I did is just, I teach them. I teach them with certain procedure. You can't teach anyone two things the same way. You have to know how to do the things, so I can teach you the things that I know how to do and the things I've learned to do. I can teach you to translate, I can teach you to write, I can teach you to act, I can teach you to play music. Maybe I can teach you to just be a little bit, um, to have a little bit of work ethics, but I can teach you to drive. I can teach you to, I don't know, um, well, I think maybe I can teach you how to shoot again or how to kill somebody. <laughs> But yeah, it depends on, I'm a curious guy. I'm a curious guy, so, and I, but I am the, of the impression that if you manage to get another person on your side, basically that person can do anything if you lead he or her through the right path, he or she, to the right path, yeah. Okay, Alrighty. thank you very much. Yeah.